Well, hey, Driven Youth, this is the 41st installment of the Exile Challenge, and we are now in Ezra chapter 9. We're almost finished. We have one more chapter left. Ezra chapter 9. question that I have for you is, are you ashamed of your sin? Do you blush at your sinfulness? Or maybe do you blush at the sinfulness of other people? Um, do you hate sin the same way that God hates sin? Or do you enjoy your sin? Now, I guess the Apostle Paul uh, said that there is an enjoyment of sin for a season. But do you hate sin? Are you ashamed of your sin? And what do we do with, with our sin? So, though you and I have been justified through the blood of Jesus Christ, or in other words, we have been declared righteous. We have been declared righteous before God based upon what Jesus has done for us on the cross through his resurrection. By grace we are saved through faith. It's not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. Not of works, lest someone should boast. We have been reconciled to God. Um, we have been uh, set apart for his holy purposes and use. Uh, you and I are in right standing with God because of what Jesus has done. So when we sin, do we lose that position? Do we lose that standing with Jesus? And according to the teaching of the New Testament, absolutely not. We don't. But we still deal with what's called indwelling sin. We still deal with with the ramifications of our sin nature that has been killed. You and I, uh, says in 2 Corinthians, I believe, chapter 5, verse 16, that you and I are now new creations. The old has passed. The new has come. Yet we still deal with that indwelling sin, the, the, the impact of our sin nature. And God is making us new through that process of sanctification. And so what do we do with our sin? Well, for, uh, one of the passages that teaches us what we do with it is in 1 John chapter 1. Um, 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 says that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, is that a reference to uh, that we, we become saved again? Is that a salvation passage in and of itself? And, and I believe that no. What that whole passage is a reference to is not salvation, but sanctification. It's not uh, coming to faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Um, it is the fact that we are growing in our relationship with God, and we want fellowship with God. And I always use this illustration when it comes to this, <clears throat> is that in a similar way to your mom and dad, when you sin against your mom and dad, when you're disobedient to your mom and dad, you do not cease being a part of that family. You are still part of that family, but you might be estranged in your relationship with them. Uh, you might have a separation, to some extent, in your fellowship with your mom and dad. So what must you do to restore that fellowship with mom and dad, though you are still part of your family, is that you go and ask them to forgive you of your sin. That forgive you of your disobedience. And they open their arms and fellowship is restored. Now remember, you didn't cease becoming a member of that family, just like for me. When I was disobedient to my parents, I didn't cease becoming um, a Henson. I was always a Henson. But when I asked God, uh, my dad to forgive me, or my mom to forgive me, uh, that fellowship between mom and dad was restored with us. Okay? I think that's the same thing that's going on in First John 1. Um, and specifically verse 9, that uh, we confess our sin to God. We repent in order to restore that fellowship with our Heavenly Father. Ha have our sins been completely forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ? Yes, yes they have. But this confession of the sin, or the repentance, this recognition of the wrong, and seeing our sin the way God sees it, is that helpful process of sanctification, of removing or destroying or putting to death the indwelling sin that still has an impact on our lives, though we do have a new nature now. 
but our natures are being renewed every day. Um, we find here in the book of Ezra uh, that Ezra sees the sin that's going on in the lives of the people there in Israel. And the, one of the big issues, one of the big sins, is that they're beginning to intermarry with the people in the land. Uh, the Egyptians, Moabites, Ammonites, all the ites that are there. <clears throat> and they were uh, expressly forbidden to intermarry um, with the people of the land. Well, why? Because uh, if they intermarried with the people, what would, what would happen is that it, the uh, pagans would... Um, lead them astray to serve and worship other gods. And that was one of the reasons that God kicked Israel out of the land in the first place is because they intermarried with people of the land and they were uh, being led astray away from the God of the heavens and the earth, Yahweh, our Lord, and they began worshiping pagans, idols, um, uh, things that were not gods. And he booted them out of the land as a result of them. And so now Ezra is in deep distress and moaning. Um, and this example here of Ezra, he says in verse 3, As soon as I heard this, I tore my garment, my cloak, and pulled hair from my head and beard and sat appalled. And are we appalled at sin? Sometimes I fear even in my own life that I'm not appalled at sin as I should be. And... You know, we need to ask the Lord that he would allow us to see our sin as he sees our sin. That we would hate sin. That we would still be kind and loving to those people. To, uh, and we would, we would still, I guess, uh, that the Lord would uh, practice patience with us, which he does. Um, but I would encourage you, uh, take those times in your prayer life to confess that sin before the Lord. Confess your sin before the Lord. In order to be saved, no. Confess that sin to the Lord in order to restore fellowship. So you might ask the Lord, Lord, help me to see my sin as you see my sin. And that um, we would take up the, uh, the commands from the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 6, that we would count ourselves dead to sin and to and alive to Christ. Sin, as a great man once said, is worse than you think. That was Pastor Van a long time ago when he did a series on sin, which was a great series. It'd be good for you to go back and um, check that series out again. But sin is worse than you think. And we need to see sin as God sees sin. And so thank you for the example of Ezra in Ezra chapter 9 for taking sin seriously. And, uh, well, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you.